Yeah, I really rate her. Uh, I was really impressed by what we saw from her last season, her, her first season in Impact. Uh, really impressive. Like they, they found her out of nowhere, which is really cool. Fostering yeah. this new talent along with the veterans of old. And now we get to see what all that time they've now had in the surfer is going to result in as we get into our first map of g 2 versus Let Her Cook kicking up on Ancient. Let's see it. Let's get excited. And of course, let her cook starting on this T side. A lot of utility here. Look at this. Uh, and maybe just a fast play out towards B. Taking Cave could be the initiative, but Jonana with the bomb needs to be a little bit careful here because there are two players for G2 and Cave. Cats are going to be splitting out, and all the dual predators actually go for the peak. So Julian's getting a lot of information. Ramson draws first blood, though. And now Crafty baited for in the side, able to actually just distract, doesn't get the kill, but Juliano struck for another. Juliano brought down incredibly low, and Zaz is even peppering through the smoke. Juliano just keeps on going. Not quite on Sergio Nana, but the damage, it surely is enough. And yeah, they all just run through that smoke together. That was a, a very nice round for the CT side. G2 over here getting off to winning ways, having the majority of the stack over on that bomb site. Feeling good. And the utility wasn't really a factor there for Leather Cook. Yeah, that was just uh, great stuff from G2 Oya. I, I mean, Juliana was just able to get free kills. <laughs> she had the, the dual for edits. She was able to take all these fights without really any issues. Um, not really punished on that peak down lane, despite so many T's being there. But I let her cook were just kind of like, okay, this is going to be the execute out the gate. This is the plan. Yep. And as soon as G2 started to poke and prod, it kind of just uh, got them a little nervous. Yeah, I just felt like you couldn't really adapt on the fly there, which to be fair is difficult to do, especially on a pistol. Giuliano finds another kill. And this is exciting. If Giuliano has warmed up, and arrived here on the server, having a, such a statement piece where she is the highest rated player, potentially. I know I'm getting really ahead of myself now, but... But one round in, Ryan. I know, but it's just exciting. The well, pop-off we'll... potential. Yes. Yeah, no, I look, it, it, it kind of feeds into what I was saying before as well, like about them wanting to start strong and, and for your veterans to start strong would be very important. This was the force buy from the Tokuk given that they got that bomb down. Got the AK in play, which has already taken one kill in rounds in. And well, now Julio might be under a bit of pressure. Run on down by that AK. Crassie in the back of the side though, dancing around the pillar. The flashbang was great, but Manashine still catches her. Fully blinded. Bomb well, gonna be planted, two versus two. Yeah, Manashine actually took down Melee, so it's actually made it even for G2. No utility apart from a smoke. There isn't a kit unless there's one dropped on the bomb site. You can see the silhouette. It's actually down the ramp. Kiosa walking forward with Zaz. About to smoke off the cave, which leaves a lot of pressure on towards Kitty. Oh, that's bounced weird. There's a yeah, big gap on the left hand side, I think. It, it went deep into that kind of cutout. Yeah. Yeah. I think at the back of that smoke, it kind of throws the whole thing into disarray. Unless you can fight and win this fight against Manashine. No, with Kitty still on the ramp. We need to isolate one of these angles. Kiosa is going to win that fight out. Might find this final kill as well. Does, but even survival, not going to be happening right here. Boom. That's, uh, I'll be honest, just really unfortunate because it didn't look like she, she threw the smoke differently. It just feels like that's a, a counter-strike thing. But it just takes a little bit of a weird bounce and then creates a, a nasty one way you need to try and navigate and... I respect the effort of going back in, thinking, okay, well, it's two versus two. Let's just trust in our aim and have that belief, which is is actually cool to see from the CT side. Despite that, though, let her cook, even with a team kill, get the round on the board. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit unfortunate, but I think she was blind at the time. Kitty's just going to charge. It's the force buy, so these deagles can get overwhelmed easily, but maybe not. Krazy is struck for one and a second as well. That was through another player. Pistols striking true, and this is now getting very dicey for these two remaining T's. Melly fights her way out, finding one kill. Manashine brought down low, though, in towards the cave. Melly brought down low further still. One Desert Eagle bullet onto either of these players would be enough to take them down. Now, there is no kit, because this was the force by through, so they have to fight their way in. Rerouting all the way down to ramp. This Manashine, Melly swinging on out, almost transfers onto the second. A 1v1. Two now for Mana Shine, swinging up at the perfect time, but oh my god, Kiosa! What a shot with the decal, and there's enough time for the defuse. That's so close. 
Maybe. Uh, yes. yes. See, I told you, easy. Wow. <laughs> told you, easy. You double backed on yourself. No, I didn't. I said, oh, I was like building the suspense. You know, everyone at home's like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then they're like, oh, I don't know. And then like, no, it was all good the whole time. It's all about building up the tension, Brandon. <laughs> Cinema. What a what a round. Uh, back and forth we go, right? The the Deagles are connecting. Kiosa actually just yet to die uh, by virtue of a player. Obviously, they dropped uh, the bomb explosion. That doesn't count on the stats. Back in with... I would say the purchase, but it's absolutely not. Let her cook have just gone for a singular Tech 9 and a couple of P250s as they encroach on towards middle. Yuliana's got really good space in towards Cave and Zaz. Spots all of the players coming through mid. They drop that smoke. Yeah, nice. That's a deep as well. Can't really run through that one. Now the MP9. Ooh, dinged. Uh oh, dinged. Uh-oh. Crash is here to help out, but oh, it gets a little bit wild. Kirsty um, and Kitty have found a killer piece. Okay, Ransom's here to, to deal with. All the issues. Gaps are plugged. Oh, no. Need an extra bullet. Hey, bomb plant. That's going to happen. Surely. Yeah, it will. I can't believe that. It's just one bullet only left in the magazine for Ramsin. And that is the difference between extra money and denial. Yo, Anna, on the burst fire, finds Ramsin. And that is a really expensive round, considering Let Her Cook didn't really invest a penny. Yeah, that's kind of wild. A couple of upgraded pistols, but they weren't even the good ones. It was just like P250s. Not that the P250 is not curated, but no deagles. Pretty decent. The Glock kill at the end. I can't believe she gets that. That's kind of wild. And in fact, off that Glock kill, she has enough money to get herself an AWP and armor. Ridiculous. Let's see it then, because look, these rounds have been so chaotic already, and it feels like Let Her Cook have actually been thriving in creating chaos, which I think a team like this would do really well in, because you're trying to upset structure, and you're trying to play a little bit more flexible, and I think that's something that Let Her Cook have got the individuals to definitely do so with. Three players, good molly. Oh, an even better kill. Juliano falls and Krezzy only left with a sliver. Yeah, good timing on that peek there, just as they were repositioning Rams in there. Self flashes the way in to deal with Mana Shine, puts it back in the advantage for G2. Nana got an advanced angle, but does have to fall back. Although if she just chilled there for a little bit longer, definitely would have found Krazzy, but such is the timings of CS. And speaking of it, Melly has found some space in towards Donut. Brought down low, but so is Krazzy. Kiosa in charge of locking down this A bomb site, but the T's are going to be coming here. The bomb making its way through main now. I think they've deliberately pumped the brakes to try and get the AWP active. Jordana can come around the corner on towards A main, posting towards Temple first, and as soon as she gets the intel, that's when the donut players can come through. But the Kiosa just swings instead, and now the reinforcements have arrived. Feels like Leto Cook left that really late, and rams in. Collects the last couple of kills. A fantastic round from G2. Yeah, great stuff. Great repositioning. Really good. Well, great. Uh, great rotates, I should say. Good response. And I mean, that was a great timing that Kitty caught there. But Ramson did a lot of work this round. Gets that kill onto Mana Shine, which has slowed down the prodding over towards B. And then she rotates over at the perfect time to A. Recognizing that without the presence in towards mid, Donut was already conceded. Kios is 7 for 0 as well. That's my goat. I like just picking a player and saying they're my goat. Yeah. Typically the one that the one that does the best. Well, no, because I already picked her up in the free game. Yeah, so you did. It's, not, you it's did. not like I'm changing my mind. All right. Kitty, my goat. Okay, you're saying that because she's getting openers. No, it's because she's like basically UK. Oh, I don't know if you can say that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Close Please. geographically. Yeah, well, we could... We take what we can get, right? So that would be that'd be great if Kitty could do that. Well, it's just pistols, and as he does find one, and there's I have been a couple of casualties here. I don't, the unfortunate thing is the bomb is around the, the opposite end of the site, so well, and Rams has just shot you, so you can't really plant it. Yeah, that's a that's a big NT in the chat. She wanted to drop some util and try and get that bomb down. Not a biggie though, watch just the pistols. 
Uh, and they're continuing to try and create that chaos, right? To cook up a storm of chaos. To brew, to brew it in the teacup like a storm. That's what they're doing. Kettle's on. The ladder cook needs to reach boiling point. Fight in towards mid, potentially, but the utility is already overwhelmed. Zaz taking really good space. Cave player locked off. Where is he by that incendiary? Zaz scales and finds Kitty. A fantastic opening kill, and I like this. It's very disciplined. Just fall back. You don't need to hang around. You don't need to potentially give that trade over. Even falling back through this smoke. Yeah, that's the player that's been putting all the early aggression on as well, dealt with. The Manishai looks to be stepping up into those shoots. Oh, Zaz is not ready for this. Doesn't matter. <laughs> she finds Donana anyway and just runs off. Manishai is trying to play patient here, trying to play it by the book. And well, maybe she will catch a timing. Oh, this is awkward. No longer awkward though, as she is dealt with. She had three players kind of locked out there. So there was actually a real chance they could have got onto A, but unfortunately, at least for her, she falls. There is utility to get these players onto the bomb site here. Crazy's holding a really passive line, which inherently feels a little bit like a retake. Shots not quite connecting. Let her cook will at least be allowed a bomb plant. That's a little bit of a luxury. Molly goes deep in towards short, trying to isolate Crazy even further out long. Retake always the name of the game in a 4v2. Melly has to take the fight. Oh my god, they almost lined up. Grams and Zorp though, it's things true, and now it's all onto Kezi, gets that first kill. Grams and Zlori, keep that in mind, they're gonna come around together trying to bait out, and it's a nice shot to kick things off, but there's the trade. Takes a lot of bodies, but G2, keep the streak going. It's very expensive though, and you're gonna know this as well if you'll let her cook. You've got more than enough money to invest in, this round is really critical, even taking 30 seconds just to talk about things. Because whilst the lead and the score has really been established and almost at times feels like it's running away from this T side, these rounds have been very close, especially when the rifles come out. So I'd be a little bit careful if I was G2. This round could be potentially one of those turning points where if G2 OES survive, Suddenly, the, the belief starts to dwindle a little bit for the T side, but but also you've kind of weathered that storm and the, the tornadoes of the constant force spies. I tried to make a web reference in there, but it didn't really work. Yeah, but all the matters you tried, right? That's at the end of the day, That's the key thing. Exactly. Um, I think Leto Cook are very aware of, of the economy situation for G2. That's why that force comes through. Instant mid smoke. Oh, they're looking to fight this. Flash on through. Smoke is there, but Zaz dodges it. Nice aggression. A lot of damage done. Two players fall. Mana Shine brought low and mid firmly in control of G2. That's where you start to get a little bit of the difference between the, the protocols from G2 Oya oh yeah, and, well, let her cook. But Mana Shine's found two in mid, but it's okay. Because she has been traded out and Ramzin was also dispatched of the A Lurk. Melly with a nice find, but certainly not ready for Juliano, who actually just only uses the USP. His peas. They survived the test. Keeping two players alive. AK and Orp kept on over. Let her cook. Onto the Tech Nines and the Mac 10. So maybe they'll just try and. Go somewhere quickly. I, I wouldn't mind if... The, okay, it's going to go B. Because B rush is the thing. I, I don't mind, like, fast A's. I think it could sometimes work out well. Particularly when you know it's just the anchor play there. But anyway, fast in through. That's that was, almost a triple collateral. Yeah. It's only the one, though. But at least she deals with more. Would have been cool. Can you imagine a triple collapse? Be sick. I would have been screaming. Can we pretend that it happened? No. Oh my god, it's a triple collab, Brandon! Mom, get the camera. That's not screaming. No, I didn't. I, no, he didn't either. I think what's what's interesting, <laughs> go, going back on topic, because I actually really want to comment on this before the round starts, where we've got Joanna on the AWP as well, is that Ramzin has been exceptional and incredibly consistent to start off this first half. And that is something that GTOya have been desperately needed. And it's fantastic to see now with this, 
Everything just feels like it's clicking into place. Look at this triple mid. In fact, you already need one. Kiosa doubles down. This is so cool. I, I love all the variations we're seeing from G2. They're, they're on this great CT side already, and yet still bringing out new variations to their setups. We saw a, a triple B in the previous round when they knew they were potentially up against the half by. This time around, we see the triple mid, knowing they're up against the full buy. It's just really cool to see all these different variations they're bringing into play. And you're really starting to see uh, what they've been working on uh, in the past few months, you know, the, the evolutions of this roster. Now we have to see Jonata try and pull off a one versus four. She strikes first. Let's go pick up the bomb. And well, there's Ramson getting her 13th frag and nine on the board for G2. If you want to get nerdy with it, you can even talk about the micro of where G2 oh yeah, are positioning the AWP whilst they are going for these variations. You're, you're kind of leaving Rams in to occupy one area of the map. If you kind of cut it down the middle, you've got G2 oh yeah, taking control in towards mid. Rams in will then be holding the B ramp or over towards A initially. And then as soon as they can see the control, you then get the AWP originally posting back on the ground you've just claimed and what that does is where letter cooker just trying to reclaim back in you're then going into these tight narrow angles and straight into rounds in sniper there's fast day lucy and the flashbang it's fantastic yeah follow-up flash is pretty good as well but unfortunately zaz can't quite connect and jordana has managed to lurk in towards mid eagle spam gets it done and yeah the faster a even though kiosa kind of had a good setup for it they just burst through that smoke completely blind her the flashbang was perfect that's the one that you throw that bounces kind of into that little crevice. Really hard to dodge it. I say you're actually sticking around. This is very risky. I don't know how long they want to hang out here because the money's not good and you've just lost the AWP. Like that AWP's now been picked up by Mana Shine. I know exactly where you are, Crassy, so I think your chance to get in way are pretty low, although. No, never mind. Also been full of praise for for the structure and some of the uh, micro decision making G two have made. That was a, an interesting macro one because look, it's you're, you're up against pistol sure, but it's a five on two, even five on three, where you definitely could have extracted yourself from the situation. We've already talked about potentially the the money troubles that could face them later down the line. Sure, the first half is nearly over, but look at what you're working with. This could have been everyone on an M four, and the AWP wouldn't have had to have been repurchased. Nice open up. Oh, Jonata, there we go. Pierces through the cave. Melly finds one in mid. Now the back of the AWP, getting aggressive. Let her cook, looking to get two consecutive. And here we are about to see the immediate repercussions of that reinvestment. Because Jonana, whilst that is fantastic, this is even going to help out let her cook further to build back into this first half. Free can quickly scale into becoming four. Because double stage loss bonus is on the horizon now for G2 OEA. Yeah, Rams in. Kiosa need to hold on to these weapons. Rams in falls back to a more passive angle. And that actually could be a bit of an issue. No, okay, I think she should be fine. She's kind of darting between two different angles, which makes me uncomfortable. Tag goes through on both sides, and Cassie's able to win that out. Kiosa might be able to pick it back up, but look at the minimap. They're just swarming. Her chance of survival dwindling. Sorry, maybe she's fought her way out. No, they're everywhere. That's a really good hunt. An exceptional hunt from Let Her Cook. Because now, instead of maybe having a, a little bit of a scary time trying to get past Ramsin, who's been so consistent, who's been that player to really pick apart these executes in towards the bomb site. Well, she's now been relegated to a USP alongside the entirety of the G2 roster. I mean, you're still happy with nine, even if you don't get any more, I feel. But uh, let's see. Not expecting a lot here. Stack. Set up, flashbang comes on over. Cassie's already in charge of locking this down. And okay, well, two kills do come through for the USPs. And the bomb given on over. Kitty, if she goes down here, oh no. This gets very scary. There's a smoke that can be dropped as well to potentially block off an angle. But actually, no, the bomb is all the way through. And Joanna just creeps on forward. Kyosa. 
It's a round out of nowhere, but she now has the chance to potentially pull this one off. A lot of time to work with. All comes down to the mind games. I really like this. Just completely give over this bomb. Because although that smoke is initially blocking off Jonanna and the orb, she's just going to reposition and tucking in towards a corner here. Actually, finding the perfect time where a mana shine is even better. Molly goes in towards pocket, back turns. Oh, the lineup as well. It all comes down to one bullet, but mana shine holds her nerve. What a fantastic attempt from Kiosa. And from Chichi area, just generally, right? That was a flashbang. That's all that was there. And they managed to get it down to a, well, basically a 1v1 at the end, almost pulling it off. That's that's the second best outcome, is, is killing four out of five. That's a sweat off the brow moment for Let Her Cook. That could have been a very troubling. As you're still trying to formulate this 9-6 potential of a first half. Again, triple mid. Kiosa takes some flak, sure, but she gets the kill conversion. That's another opening kill for the CT side. She said a menace in these mid hits. You see immediately though, Letter Cook acknowledge that, that means B is weaker. It's that scale on four, taking this space in towards long as well. Isolating the angles. Krusty is between players here. And oh, sees Kitty coming on through. Jenna did drop Zaz, but. Now Krasi can try to continue to be a thorn in their side, fighting on forward, fighting kills. Two versus four now. The orb is still in play. Melly wants to get aggressive. Oh, Melly! That's fantastic. Three kills for her and a fourth potentially on the horizon. But Juliana makes sure that, that is disallowed. Jonana tucked behind the side, can strike on through. Good jiggle. Dancing around the pillar. Time and issue and Jonana steps up. Oh, wow. How does it keep getting this close? Right down to the wire. It's nail-biting stuff. And Joan Anna, the presence of mind to swap off the AWP to the AK and the wide swing onto Juliana. That is the last thing she was expecting. But this spray, that is just disgusting. Oh, that was nice. Got me feeling like those graffitis on the floor in Spawn. Now an A play from all the conditioning you've been doing on these fast B hits. Against a difficult investment here in the last round of the first half. This is a really good call out of Kezi. Kelsa, touch behind side boxes. Oh, gets a nice kill on Jonana. Distractions while Zaz takes the fight towards Donut, but two for two. Melly brought down low. Rotation's going to be faster. Is this luck through mid that can be deadly? Kezi will be coming through late and... CTs have to be aware of it, but Ramsen catching off Melly and... Oh, actually, Juliano did seem to be aware of the possibility, but Kessie reroutes. Both players doubling up in towards main. Smoke going over, actually going to block both of them. The boost comes up on over. Up on high is Kessie, that flashbang, though. All the utility has been so good for G2, and it's enough to get them their 10th. A 10-5 half, Brandon. Yeah, absolutely exceptional. That utility on the retake was superb. Double digits for the first half. And this is Letter Cook's map pick, no less.
everyone, we are back at 10-5 half, puts Gigi Oya in a commanding lead on their opponent's map pick as they swap over to the T side. And this is a very stark contrast to what we saw from G2 Oya oh yeah, last season. It feels like they've really refined their map. The utility usage has been superb. We commented on it in the last round of the first half, but just in general, that entire first half was a very dense support network of utility. Everyone was helping out each other. And now Mana Shine could be helping out herself to a couple of kills. But again, the flashbang, it just slightly offsets. Kezi will find a double. And that makes this retake slightly more possible here. Yeah, you can see kind of the pathing of the tears when they came through. Zaz is the one that survived, but she was the one that scales into sight. So the players that are meant to deal uh, with Kezi tucked back actually went down to her. Allowed her to get that double kill. Now, Nelly, you know, on through. They're pushing into this retake, and the kills are quick. Zaz now has to clutch up, has to find three more. And all the trigger discipline for the moment, but now that Reels herself has to fire off eventually, and they swarm her. It's a pack of cats, and that is going to be the pistol going the way of Let Her Cook. Yeah, nice try. I really like the idea. You can see it in her head thinking, when do I actually start trying to take these kills? And unfortunately for Zaz, Let Her Cook turned around, and once they noticed her, everyone swung together. They gave Zaz no opportunity to isolate those kills. A very nice pistol round coming in, especially after that started with a little bit of disarray on the bomb site for Let Her Cook. Forced by in for G2 as well. Mac 10s though, and not a Galen in sight. A lot of utility once again being prioritized. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Normally you'd see at least one rifle. Well, very often you'll see even five rifles, right? And, and lacking the util, but no, they're bursting into the B-bomb site. Zaz leading the charge with that MAC-10 scaling on through. And again, a good space taken. Jonana, though, out towards Long has already dealt with Krazzy. They have to wrap around and find her, and she's going to get pincered. So that is a rifle that can be picked up on over. Anishine looking like she's about to burst through this smoke any second, waiting for the queue. The flames go forward. That pushes her further into the smoke and oh, almost to her demise. Kezi also cops a few and eventually dealt with G2 doing a good job of not allowing the CTs back into this one and they eat them alive, winning every single duel and getting the upgrades. Yeah, what a what a way to get yourself back into well, I'd say the half. We've got like we've had two rounds played, but just back into the swing of things and offsetting let her cook's momentum, not allowing them to build consecutive rounds in a row. And that Again, ex explosion onto the bomb site. The execute was very decisive and it was punchy. It felt like as soon as the utility was gone, it was like, okay, we also need to go, which is something that teams with structure and that have rehearsed a lot are so much better at. And that looked like a, a really well choreographed routine out of G2. I love what I'm saying, particularly because. The one time we saw G2 play Ancient, right? It might have even been in one of the first couple of weeks that yes. of this roster when they'd first come through. Uh, they got absolutely decimated on it. It was a map that they were kind of permering, uh, and they did permer after that. So to have now allowed it back into their pool and to have perfected a bunch of really nice set strats, their CT side looked fantastic. I'm very impressed, but still have to stand against this force by, and the Deagle did some work. Kessie got one. That's a mana shine. So, falling. Kitty, though, oh my god! Didn't see that from her POV, but Blinkity missed it. We will have to get a replay back of that because that is disgusting. What? The hand cannon strike, not once, not twice, but three times for Let Her Cook in about two seconds. I, yeah, that caught me off guard. I'm not going to lie, Brandon. That was well, like, it caught G2 boom. off guard as well. I was just waiting for them to start cleaning up these pistols. They'd already found the entries into the yeah. site, the bomb about to go down, and then bam, bam. It's one of those rounds where you're doing your cadence. It's like, da, 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 da. Oh, my goodness me. Like, how does that happen? Speaking of, in towards mid, another trade. Zaz scaling in towards red. Kitty needs to fall back. Can't see a thing because, again, G2 put a smoke straight in her face. Zaz finds even further impact. That's not an MP9. That's now an M4. Yeah, she can now just pin, so they can just flush onto Mana Shine. He's going to be under a lot of pressure here. But if she can find these two kills, that would be everything. So there are no falls, and Mana Shine finds those kills. As mentioned, Melly rotates over to deal with Zaz, and Crisis is averted. That's a good recovery. 
But what G2 Oya just got from that round is valuable intel. Zaz, without any pressure, was able to just walk in towards Red Room for free and let her cook didn't have a player that was dedicated there. Maybe it was because Zaz got that opening pick and there was a player in towards Donut that was trying to protect, but one kill... And that sent the rotations a little bit scrambling, especially with the lack of information that Let Her Cook had out towards Shelf because of that cave smoke. Last one through. It has scaling again very quickly. Yeah. They've managed to get all of this control. This makes sense. This is all back off the information they've literally just learned, putting it into practice. You managed to get Donut in the first 20 seconds of the round, Brandon. What do you do now? You just pump the brakes, you hold, you wait for the CTs to drain their utility and also potentially walk into you. Juliano holding from shelf, Kitty goes round the corner, bang, headshot. You can see that Letter Cook would have loved to have just gotten the information and just get a bit of map control so they can put focus elsewhere. But now you've got to keep at least one player engaged because Juliano keeps prodding. I think now you wait for your donut player to get involved, or you let Mana Shine just walk into you. Perfect. This round is so by the book for, for G2. Oh, yeah. You can flick through every single page and go, okay, well, at this time interval, we need to do this. With this amount of control, here's what's next. And it is incredibly regimented, and it is working out perfectly. Miss Shot might allow a little bit of an opportunity here, oh. but no, Giuliano denies absolutely everything. There we go, rolling back the years. Oh, oh. keeps on going. Lining them up, knocking them down. We're not playing one bullet in the chamber here. Can fire off a few more, but she doesn't need to. Devastating round. G2 bouncing back from those couple that they lost. That was a really good round of Counter-Strike. I'd even go so far as to say that that is the best round structurally I've seen out of G2 Oya ever. All right. That, that's how good it was. And you're a guy that loves getting nerdy with it. Oh, yeah. You got the big spectacles on, little propeller hat. <laughs> <laughs> Pending. It's in the mail. Suspenders. No. Big shiny glossy black shoes. Socks pulled up. Grey shorts just go past your knees. If the, the socks aren't knee high, you're, you're doing it wrong. Little bow tie. No, that's Newt's domain. That is true. You wouldn't want to wouldn't want to wouldn't want to cross over into that. I don't want to step on his bow ties. Yeah. <laughs> Very patient. G2 oh yeah are going to be understanding that there will be a force investment here. There might be some luxuries for Let Her Cook, and there is. There's a sniper rifle, and there's one rifle, and then four on Kitty, and the MP9s look for further intel, and again, just denied. Melly will find that trade, but it comes at such a consequence of HP, and Kitty being vocal, that gives a lot of intel to Zaz, and now she starts to walk in. Yeah, Zaz sticks on through, and she can now cut off all the rotations when they hit on towards B. This position yeah. is perfect. She could even push through and go B, but instead wants to collect the kill on towards Kitty and I think then start to push through. Time is running out. That's a, a little bit of an issue. Melly is in a good spot, but the HP is going to be the detriment. There's that kill she's waiting for. Delivered. Yeah, and it's going to go hunting for her, but the issue is the bomb's about to be planted and there's nothing you can do about that. Billy tries to do something about it, but it doesn't get too far. And okay, you do find Zaz. And how is an AK? You got an AWP no armor. Yeah, you just you save this. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because this was the, the force investment. This was the, the committal of funds uh, all in the middle of the ancient table. Unfortunately, it just doesn't quite pan out. The discipline on display for G2 right now. Is something really worth commending over and over again. Because this is so systematic. 13-8 after surviving the scare of losing the pistol and a couple of forced follow-ups. They haven't looked back.
yeah, I guess uh, let her cook speak. Reason that they managed to get back into this game was was off the back of that deagle round we with Kitty and Melly finding those kills, and then being able to win the subsequent gun rounds. Now G two feeling comfortable on their T side, things are under way, and let her cook have not been able to get into a, a good buy since. You can see they've got uh, two deagles in the mix this time around. Utility incredibly light, but they want to keep fighting. And that fight's going to come to them. Straight up comes B. Manishine gets the first kill, drops smoke defensively. They want to keep combating here, and Kitty's deagle strikes for one. Kitty's deagle has been exceptional, and that does give a lifeline in. It means that Manishine can hold her ground and also find Juliano through the smoke. She goes straight in towards Krezzy, but that's because the flank is on the horizon. Prezi now has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with three of these players, and they're all circling around her. It starts to get a little bit difficult. Orp brings out. In fact, there's two orps here for the CT side. Kezi is locked in the angle in case Krezi goes wide from long. Granana now standing on cave, hits the shot. The pace change was not the answer. You understand why. It's because there's limited utility for let her cook. The condition has been set to be really patient, to be really slow. Yeah, I like the idea after they've played so many like structured slow pace rounds, right? Like that's like two or three in a row. So, um, you know, to go for something a bit pacey, knowing that it could completely break the other side is uh, a good change up. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work out for them. They know this double orp in play, which I don't know if that changes your strategy here. Oh, oh. Kezi, that's for free. Really good spam lineup. Speaking of spams, the orp brings out for one by Cave. Doesn't quite connect, but Kitty's will. And that's on towards Ramzan, who has been very instrumental in collecting a lot of kills on that sniper rifle. And off the, the back of claiming that space, Manashine just smokes it off, deems it closed for now. And that means that Kitty can refocus attention back towards Donut alongside Kezi, who is now trying to shut the door behind G2. It's a little bit scary though. Was, you've lost that mid presence. Thankfully for Leho Cook, they got all that control over down beep, deep B. <laughs> I was going to say beep D. <laughs> deep B. Um, that they can afford to just sit tight. Manishine's sitting in the smoke. It's about to fade and she could be in trouble. Caught out by Giuliano. Kitty now under pressure. Flashbang comes through. She manages to dodge it. That's the bomb in Giuliano's hand. Smoke comes on over. What's Kitty decide to do here? Decides to sit and the timing shot is perfect. Zaz now has to pull off the clutch. Melly found that kill in towards Donut as well. Time is ticking on down and she has three players that she has to deal with. No way to isolate Donut either, which is a big concern as Smoke fades in towards CT, setting up Jonana. Nicely done from Let Her Cook. That was a round which required individuals to bail them out of situations because in the in the mid round there where G2 were very patient in towards A main and Donut whilst waiting for the smokes to expire and collecting that kill on towards Mana Shine, it was actually Melly that was really worried about mid because they had no control over towards red. They had two players towards the bomb site. One was playing really passively in towards long, but there was a timing that could have been hit where G2 could have been in their spawn. So whilst they were dealing with that, that's why the A bomb site was just so vulnerable. Fast play is going to cut me off my train of thought because it is just glocked. And well, it should be a complete mode and it isn't the kill feed. Yeah, that was pretty quick. Um, let her cook now within two of G2. And a little update as well from yeah. um, uh, Guild versus Navi Javelins. That one's been a bit of a dominant affair. Navi Javelins obviously coming in as one of the season favorites. They've consistently made it through to the land finals. Start strong with a 16-4 victory over Guild. On the first map, obviously. Kezi. Get aggro, but smoke gonna land. Kiosa. Full stun back a little bit. Now Kezi gets her focus elsewhere. Spots Juliano and wins out that fight. It's away. Ramson now trying to chase her down, trying to get something back, and that's a nice kill. Keeping it in the four on four, but June Anna in towards Cave, ready for Ramson to fall back. Yeah, this is really cool from Let Her Cook. So the adjustment that's been made in towards, in towards middle and just the design of the rounds is rather than sitting back, they're trying to get proactive, but they aren't doing it on their own. They're doing it with a buddy. 
pairing up and taking this space. Speaking of going on their own, though, Yonana clears even more space. A mana shine on our anchor in rolls is now just tucked in. Kitty looking to take first contact. I think she's been spotted out. Smoke goes in. Mana shine will go in a sec. No, actually, just wait. Yeah, this is cold. Really, I don't know. I was gonna say something. This, the, I know you might think this is a bait, right? This is the, you, you think. Okay, why didn't she swing? But you just never expecting her to be here. Oh. And so, whenever she swings, it's gonna be completely caught off guard. Gets that kill on Krazy, and that's enough. Kills that one versus three. Actually, has space to get towards B. Would you believe it? And finds oh. Jonana. Oh, she's gonna go back to A though. She doesn't know. Doesn't matter. Melly wins out the fight regardless. And now we're just within one. And that could be evened up very soon. Look at the money for G2. It probably will be equalized. And now we go into the tail end of the game where we've been praising all of this structure, but you've got to really give a lot of compliments here to let her cook who have started to find reactions. And I've done this on the fly, live. There's opportunities to take timeouts here, but neither team have decided to elect it. They just want the game to keep going and keep becoming dynamic and fluid. And right now, I mean, if you let her cook, why would you want to take that pause? I mean, you're chaining all of these rounds in a row together. Momentum definitely on your side. The A pop, it's coming, it's here, but you still got to get past the AWP and Mana Shine. Dodging past the AWP, Mana Shine though, swings out, gets to Julian and does run her down, and these smokes are gonna give some cover. Kessie though, swings in behind default, Juliano lights out, and oh my god, she's found another. Managing to get it done here all by herself. AWP now in her hands. She can lock down another angle. Fourth kill for Juliano. They can take a pause now. Kitty sounds off her 5 7, comes in towards the site, looking to try and deny the bomb. Actually, it's Default can't find the kill onto Krazy. The ace denied, but G2 will be happy with that one. I mean, that, that's a round where it's a three versus five, and they completely turn it on its head, all at the hands of Juliano. Four incredible kills uh, at the hands of three different weapons as well. That is a round that Let Her Cook did not want to drop. That should have been one of the easier ones. Instead, they've tripped over their own shoelaces a little bit. That's crazy. Having, what a round for Juliano. Yeah. They kind of give her a few kills there. And okay, well, Let Her Cook decides to go get some kills themselves. This is so outrageously bold from Kezi. And Kiyosa was holding for it. Kitty now scales back in towards mid to reclaim this space because they have got the intel that G2 were just hanging around by the square thing and also T spawn. Yeah, we're bringing that one back. <laughs> now they're going to reset in towards A. Mana Shine only defender here right now. Has actually repositioned herself further in the bomb site. Can take a headshot angle by default, but there is there are there, oh, the, oh words are hard. There, there are, are mollies to offset this. Yes, utilities and mollies. Through. The executes happening. Mana shine into the site. Gets on behind default. Has a supportive kitty ready to fight as well, and they've slowed it on down. It's allowed all these rotations to come on over. Flames land behind default, but this smoke is giving space to work with. But Juliano is with a menace on this A bomb site. Continues her reign of terror. Kitty can't find anything, but Melly might have an opportunity. Janana providing a distraction with an AWP kill, and look how low two of these players are. Bomb getting planted does go down. Ramson, though, the only one with HP, and she's got the AWP. Gets a kill into Kitty. Kiosa swings on through, and it's all into Melly. One versus two, a single bullet. Will do it. Has to find her mark, has to find the kills. That's the first one. Ramson is low, and you can see that's known. USB comes on out, taps the bomb, dropping the smoke. Perhaps and tuck behind default an unknown entity at the moment, and this is a little bit chaotic. She's just gonna stick it. Ramson with the AWP needs to find her mark. It's the tag, and the Glock gets it done. That's a little bit unfortunate there for Melly. The smoke doesn't land cleanly on the bomb. It, it kind of bubbles on one of the pebbles. That is really to her detriment. Take nothing away from Ramson, though. Just waits until the best possible opportunity to strike with her low HP 
15 12. But I, in my opinion, that's another round in which let her cook have let fall away from them. And now they're going up not only for survival in this map on their map pick, but just try and scale it back towards overtime. But look at this it's three MP9s and a couple of Deagles. It's a real shame because this has been such a highly competitive map, but you can really see the difference in the structure that G2 have brought. Let a cook letting a, a few advantage situations fall from them. Again, an opening kill found, though. Guess he finds success. Let's add another player and I'll go back for another bite, but start around. Calls in Mana Shine to support Kiosa. About to walk into a sandwich and donut, and it's not a tasty treat. She falls. Now it's a 3v5. Grassy looking to try and get some space back, and she does so, but Giuliano falls to Jonana. This is looking good for Let Her Cook. Yeah, you heard that shot ring out from the POV of a main. Jonana with another deagle. Rams in. She's been impeccable this map, but this would be something extraordinary. One versus four, and they all are starting to swing together. That is sensible. Throwing the orb out of there, although it falls back down the stairs. That's a little bit unfortunate, but we like the idea. Yeah, nice idea. <laughs> Unfortunately, is retrieved. Let her cook. Staying alive. Again, able to convert off getting the opener. That was something I was just mentioning that they've been struggling to do, but... Able to get it done this time. What a what a map we're getting here. Everyone is firing off. It's so good to see. Feels like every player has had their own individual moment at a different point. Yeah, compliments to the chef because let her cook and the, the kill contribution across everyone is now incredibly even. And Anna repeats. Oh, goodbye. That's nice. The reposition deeper onto the line as well to go for the peak. Harder to hit, get the, you know, the AK has to be headshot positioned. Is it G2 have been really favoring the A-bomb site in the recent four or five rounds? And Kiosa does get one with that hero AK, but dealt with easily enough. Because he tucked into the site, it should be. Relatively easy for Let Her Cook to lock this one in. So as is low, dealt with by Jonana, and there it is. Final kill comes through. Jonana also gets her 26 frag. She has been quietly slogging along with those. The G2 needs to take space in towards shelf here. They need to actually fight for cave control because they're giving a lot of map control over to Let Her Cook, who are now also being a little bit more explosive in towards middle and denying the space that Zaz was currently like claiming and getting those flank kills from uh, the the structure has been completely disrupted, and that is all credit to let her cook being able to adjust here on the CT side. A bit more of a, a standard default, a smoking towards cave, which does earn G two that shelf control. See how spread out they are. Very default here. Prioritizing getting a bit of control over towards B, where you can see they're creeping on around. Maybe. Pushing towards Cave. Kitty going for a bit of a spray there, but Zaz is ahead, and I think that's known. Is it? Yeah, that's yeah. known. Jenna's going to come over with the orb, actually, and post up on the angle, but the timing from Zaz is beautiful. What a shot. The smoke actually hit Zaz from Kitty, and Kitty might just re swing, and Zaz is anticipating it. There's that patience this time just posted up on an angle. And now G2 start to work the map. They've got the opening kill. That's even forced to rotate. And now mid can be claimed as their own. A main now starts to creep and become part of the T-side's reign of terror. And Mana Shine needs to hold on here. Both coming in from Donut and A main and can't get past Zaz, who's the hero in this round from G2. Yeah, opening up on both sides of the, the, the map. Kezi trying to fight back through, only good for the one. Kitty misses her flick, and this might be it. Melly has four players to find. Does have a kit, but smoked off at the moment, has to wait for the fade here. Oh, her toes are revealed. Krassi spots her out, and Melly staying alive somehow, charges on through and meets her demise. G2, take the opener, 16-14. Yes, uh, but look, that was 
not a dominant affair by any means. You've got to remember that G2 Oya were up 9-1. In this map on the CT side, let her cook battled back valiantly. Not